You're listening to Fifth Grade and the Cosmic Explosion of Knowledge. Amazing information and facts that will make your brain explode. Do you want to learn about the Industrial Revolution? Well, around 1750 to 1830, the revolution began in England and went to other parts of the world. This had nothing to do with war or anything. It was just when people started to make more machines. This changed the way people make goods. This was a time when things changed rapidly, known as the Industrial Revolution. If you're still wondering what this is, here's a brief definition. It was where people were making more machines and had more things during this time. Before the revolution, people had to make their materials by hand. It took a lot of time and skill. One of the most important machines in the revolution was the steam engine. This used steam to work and also help people travel. This also made it easier to ship things over the country. Large factories started to pop up in cities. Many people left their farms and homes to work at a factory. This movement from the countryside to the city is called urbanization. Now, you know more about the Industrial Revolution. Let's talk about what was made in the revolution. Let's start with the spinning jenny. This was made around 1764 by James Hargaves as a new kind of spinning machine. It could draw thread from eight spindles instead of one. He thought of this after his daughter Jenny knocked over a spinning machine. Next is Walt's steam engine. In Britain, in the 17th century, steam engines were used to pump water out of mines. In 1765, James Walt increased the efficiency of the steam pumping engines. With future improvements in the 1780s, Walt's engine became a good power source in the following paper mills, flour mills, cotton mills, iron mills, and more. That's a lot of mills. Lastly, we're going to talk about the water frame. It is called this because it was powered by a water wheel. The water frame patented in 1769 by Richard Alkwright was the first fully automatic and continuously operating spinning machine. It also produced stronger and greater qualities of thread than the spinning jenny because of its size and power source. While other spinning machines were good inside, this one required location in large buildings near a fast running stream. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. I hope you learned and want to learn more about things made in the Industrial Revolution. There are multiple toys out there, but today I'm going to tell you the history and more about Legos. The history of Legos. The history of Legos began when old Kurt Christian, a carpenter in Bilden, Denmark, who made wooden toys in 1932. In 1934, he made the company Lego from a Danish phrase, leg got, which means play well, in 1947. Lego expanded and began making classic toys. In 1949, Lego began making, among among other new products, an early version of now now the familiar locking bricks called automatic binding bricks. These bricks are based off of Kitty Craft self-locking bricks, which had been patented in the United Kingdom in 1939 and released in 1947. Lego received a sample of the Kitty Craft bricks from the supplier in the injection molding machine that that it purchased. The bricks are really manufactured from cellulose acetate were for development from a stackable wooden blocks at the time. Fun fact, six 2x4 Lego bricks can be combined in more than 915 million ways. What is the purpose of Legos? The Lego group is engaged in the development of children's creativity through play and learning. Based on the world's famous Lego brick, the company provides toys, experiences, and teaching materials for children in more than 140 countries. Fun fact two, 
On average, every person on Earth owns 86 Lego bricks. In 2012, 45.7 billion Lego bricks were produced at the rate of 5.2 million per hour. Popular culture. Lego's popularity is shown by its huge respiration and operation in many ways of cultural works, including books, films, and artwork. It has been used in classrooms to teach students. In the U.S. Lego Education, North America is joining together with Pitsco Inc. and Educational Division of the Lego Group. Fun Fact 3. By volume, there are around 250 pieces per quart or 1,000 pieces per gallon. By weight, there are around 700 pieces per kilogram, which about 300 pieces per pound. Here was the history of Legos and more, and now you know way more about a common toy, the Lego. Bees. What does this word bring to mind? Honey? The time it got stung? A European honeybee? Well, in truth, most bees are nothing like this. With more than 20,000 known species of bees, it's hard to truly understand all the different types of bees in one segment of a podcast, but we can grasp the most important information. So in today's podcast, we are going to dig into what a bee is, why they are important, and lots of other stuff. So, to start out with, what is a bee? Good question! A bee is an insect related to a wasp, but they are quite different from wasps. Adult bees vary from 2 millimeters to 2 inches. Almost all bees don't live in colonies like you may think. These bees are called solitary, meaning they live on their own. When bees are solitary, they make their own homes, mostly in dead plants and wood, or in the ground. All bees have different ways of making homes. Some create little chimneys over their homes, while others live in dead plants. Wait, why does everyone automatically think of honeybees? Are there other ones? Yes, there are lots of other bees. There are over 20,000 different types of bees around the world, with 4,000 native to North America, and these are just the ones we know. The smallest bee is known as the Propita minima, which is barely 2 millimeters long. The largest bees is the largest bee is the Wallace's giant bee, which can reach over 2 inches. A native bee is a bee that has evolved in their environment for a very long time. These native bees have been here much longer than the European honeybees, which were brought to the Americas by settlers, meaning they are non-native species. People think of honeybees the most because they are an agricultural species. I mean, they give us honey and are probably one of the easier bees to see and recognize flying around your yard. Or you might also remember being stung by one, too. What about the bee's role in the environment? Bees pollinate flowers. Pollination is the process in which pollinators, such as bees, move pollen from one flower to flower to enable plants to reproduce. The flowers lure the bees and other pollinators in with their bright colors, sweet smells, and eye-catching shapes. When the bees see or smell the flowers, they come to sip the nectar, and while doing so, get pollen on all of them. So when they fly to the next flower, they get the pollen from the first flower onto the other one. Without bees, this ecosystem where they live couldn't survive. On average, one out of four mouthfuls you eat or drink comes from plants pollinated by bees. In fact, roughly 75% of all Native American plant species need insects to pollinate them to reproduce. Bees make up most of the pollination service. About 20% to 45% of native bees only pollinate one species or genus of plant. So if the plant disappears, then the bees do too. And if the bees disappear, the plant can't reproduce. Did you know native bees pollinate around 80% of all the flowering plants around the world? Okay, so bees have a very important role in the ecosystems. Are there bees that eat things other than nectar? Yeah, actually. Though most bees rely on pollen and nectar as a main food source, there are some types of bees, three to be exact, that eat meat. These types of bees, all of which are vulture bees, have a bacteria inside them that is similar to those inside vultures and other animals that eat rotten meat, which allows them to eat this meat. Interesting. I wonder what a bee's life is like. A bee's life cycle all starts with an adult laying an egg. About a week later, the egg hatches into a larva. This larva will grow for about two to three weeks, and then it will turn into a pupa. These pupa continue to grow for about another week before transferring into a full-grown adult bee. 
The bees that live on their own feed their baby larvae all on their own while the cells or their homes are sealed up. Social bees, or bees that live together, feed their young larvae as a group effort. I didn't know that bees spent the first month of their life not looking like bees. I mean, when I hear about bees, I normally just hear about honeybees disappearing and how bad it is. Is this happening to other bees too? As unfortunate as it is, yes. In 2017, the rusty patch bumblebee was placed in the endangered species list by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. This was the first bumblebee placed in the list by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Why? Native bees are endangered because of a variety of reasons, like loss of habitat, climate change, use of pesticides, and so much more. As unfortunate as this is, there are things we can do to help them. Planting bee gardens, number one. One of the best ways to protect and improve habitats is to plant a garden with native and colorful flowers. Making sure that they, that they bloom at different times is important so that there is almost always something blooming for the bees to get food from. In fact, even when the flowers die, they can provide good homes for the bees by having dried hollow stems that create perfect little homes. Be organic. Using bee-friendly pesticides and buying organic food can always make a difference in the environment. Keeping your land wild. Not mowing your lawn and letting things grow is a perfect way to keep native and other species blooming and provide a good place for the bees to call home and find food. Since roughly 70% of all bees nest in the ground, providing an area for them to do so is important. Places like bare ground and hay fields give the bees just what they need. Another great way to provide homes is to leave dead trees or hollow stems of last season's flower. This is always a perfect way to give them homes. So in today's podcast segment was all about bees. Yes, and I think... I like them a lot better knowing most don't sting. That's true. I think it was interesting that some bees eat meat. Never thought it possible. So maybe next time you go outside and see some bees flying around, you might not be as scared of them as you are. Now that you know how truly beautiful they are. changed a lot over the school year. I moved to middle school, made new friends, and more. I have changed a lot this year. The three main ways are making new friends, moving to middle school, and improving my computer skills. One way I've changed is by making new friends. Meeting new people has made me less nervous around random people and more confident. I have improved making new friends with confidence and helping people out. I hope I make new friends every year and have fun memories. I have also changed by moving to middle school. This is making me feel more confident in myself. I am nervous because I don't really know anything about middle school. I am nervous but excited too because I love moving to another grade. I have gotten better at using a computer. I have improved using a computer, which will be easier to use in future grades. Learning how to use a computer was hard. It had many complications, but I got through it. I have learned so many things this year, making it so much easier to use a computer. This is how I changed over the year. I met new friends. I moved to middle school. I have gotten better at using a computer. I am nervous in many ways, but I am excited to move to middle school and have fun. This year has been a very important year for me. I have learned all sorts of different things and have become a better me. From learning new things, becoming more self-assured, and finding new hobbies, there are many ways I've changed this year. The first thing is that I've definitely learned some new stuff. I mean, that's what school is all about, is it not? I think that I now understand a lot more things in every subject, but most especially in math and social studies, since they are big subjects that seem to go on forever. I learned about the Boston Tea Party, how to plot a coordinate grid, where the word trapezoid comes from, and all sorts of other random and cool things. The second thing that has changed about me is that I've become more poised. I think I've come to trust myself more than I did at the beginning of the year. More self-assured. I feel more confident in my abilities myself. The third and last thing I feel like has changed is that I have found more hobbies and things I treasure. One of my new favorite hobbies is writing. This year I have written more than I've probably written in my entire life combined and I love it. Writing this year has inspired me to start writing my own novel and other pieces of writing. It definitely feels like a strong suit for me. 
This year has had a lot of changes for me. I've made new friends, learned new things, and I've become more confident in my abilities and myself. I have definitely changed for the better this year, and I am ready to keep climbing up. We all change and grow. That's a fact of life. And you need to grow so we can be better at other things than three years ago. We all grow in different ways. The three ways I have changed are being more helpful, confident, and better at using a computer. First, I feel I'm more helpful because I have grown and can do more, such as being able to help with my baby niece Hartley. I can also now go into a store and get things while a year ago I was terrified just to go in one because of COVID. I think it is very important to be helpful because then that shows maturity and it is just a really good skill to have. Maturity shows I am growing up. I also think I am more confident. I think I was less less confident last year because we didn't do as many activities than this year and I wasn't super used to being around other kids and people. Confidence is super important because it helps us feel good about ourselves and more prepared for other things in the upcoming year. Lastly, I'm definitely better at using a computer. I can do more on it and get to things quicker than before. Before this year, I was not around a computer at all, so I didn't know how to do things, but people helped me, and now I can do many things. I also think it is important to be able to use a computer because when you get older, there are some things you need to do on a computer that are more complex on a phone, like editing, meeting online, and more. We all change and grow. That's a fact of life, and you need to grow. We all grow in different ways. We have heard how I have changed, like helping, more confident, and better at using a computer. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Like this podcast. And we'll give you a round of applause.